Congressman Ron Paul. Tell them that to say, and I, I really get that, but I'm on the front lines of the stock market. We were down 400 points today. We're not going to be done going down if this keeps going up. If Italy keeps, the rates keep going up. Surely you must recognize that this is a moment-to-moment -moment situation for people who have 401ks and IRAs on the line, and you wouldn't just let it fail. Just go away and take our banking system with it. No, no, you have to let it, you have to let it liquidate. We've had, we took 40 years to build up this worldwide debt. We're in a debt crisis never seen before in our history. The, the, the sovereign debt of this world is equal to the GDP, as ours is in this country. If you prop it up, you'll do exactly what we did in the Depression, prolong the agony. If you, do, if you prop it up, you do what Japan has done for 20 years. So yes, you want to liquidate the debt. The debt is unsustainable, and this bubble was predictable because 40 years ago, we had no restraints whatsoever on the monetary authorities, and we piled debt on debt, we pyramided debt, we had no restraints on the spending, and if you keep bailing people out and prop it up, you just prolong the agony as we're doing in the housing bubble. Right now, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are demanding more money because we don't allow the market to determine what these mortgages are worth. If you don't liquidate this and clear the market, Believe me, you're going to perpetuate this for a decade or two more, and that is very, very dangerous. Stop her, stop her, stop her. Ron Paul, you have said you want to close down agencies. Tell us about your tax plan as well as closing agencies, federal agencies. Where do those jobs go? Well, eventually they go into the private sector. They don't all leave immediately when the plan goes into the effect. But what my plan does is it addresses taxes in a little different way. We're talking about the tax code, but that's the consequence, that's the symptom. The disease is spending. Every time you spend, spending is a tax. We tax the people, we borrow, and then we print the money, and the prices go up, and that is a tax. So you have to address the subject of spending. That is the tax. That is the reason I go after the spending. I propose in the first year, cut $1 trillion out of the budget in five departments. Now, the, uh, the other thing is that you must do if you want to get the economy going and going again is you have to get rid of price fixing. And the most significant price fixing that goes on that gave us the bubble, destroyed the economy, and is preventing this from coming out is the price fixing of the Federal Reserve manipulating interest rates way below market rates. You have to have the market determine interest rates if you want a healthy, viable economy. So you think the economy would be stronger if interest rates were higher right now? You would, have, you would have more incentive, you would take care of the elderly, they get cheated. They get nothing for their CDs. Why, why cheat them and give the banks into, uh, loans at zero percent, then they loan it back to the government at three percent. They're ripping us off at the expense of those on fixed incomes and they retire. Even though higher interest Just, rates would make it much more expensive to borrow mortgages, but, borrow. But what you want is the market to determine this. Whoever thought that one person, the Federal Reserve Board Chairman, knows what the money supply should be? Just in the past six months, M1 has gone up at the rate of 30 percent. That spells inflation, that spells lower standard of living and higher prices, and watch out, they're coming. We uh, need to get the government out of the business, and we do need to have the right to opt out of uh, Obamacare, but we ought to have the right to opt out of everything, and the answer to it is turn it back over to the patient and the doctor relationship with medical savings accounts. So I would say that we've had too much government. I've been in medicine. It's gone downhill. Quality has gone down. Prices have skyrocketed because of the inflation. So you need to get a market force in there, but medical savings account. But this, this mess has been created, it's a bipartisan mess, so it's been there for a while. So what we need is a doctor-patient relationship and medical savings account where you can deduct it from your taxes and get a major medical policy. Prices then would come down. 30 seconds. Congressman. Uh, my plan of uh, cutting the budget by a trillion dollars does deal with Medicaid, and that is that uh, it preserves it, and there is a transition period with the goal that eventually 
we would hope to move that back into the economy, but right now it would be too much to do it in one year. You know, finding a trillion dollars was a job and a half and getting rid of five, five departments. So, uh, yes, the, my budget takes, takes into consideration health care for the elderly, health care on Medicaid, as well as child health care. At the same time, we deal with the bailouts, the banks, and all the benefits that they get from the financial system. Because what we're facing today is the crisis in this housing crisis. If I could just have one second on that. We face the housing crisis once again because it's price fixing. They're fixing the prices of these mortgages too high, and this is why nobody will buy them. This is why you have to get rid of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, sell all of that into the marketplace. And the reason they do this is to prop up the banks, because the banks have invested in Europe. They've invested in, in the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and these credit default swaps. They're in big trouble, and that is why they're getting bailed out, and that's why they're not allowing these mortgages to go down, and that is why we will most likely bail out Europe, which will be a real tragedy. Congressman, it's, thank you for that. It's time for a quick break. Hold it attention to why we're here on this campus and what many students are very interested in, and that is the fact that, Congressman Paul, right now we are looking at student loan debt that is near one trillion dollars. Americans owe more on student loans right now than credit cards, and the average debt for a college senior right now is over $25,000. It's obviously a very hot topic right here on this campus and with students across the country. Just listen to what they have to say. Tuition rates have increased roughly three times that of inflation over the last three decades. More students have to take out loans or forego college. My generation is graduating with student debt levels at an unprecedented level. So Congressman Paul, you've already talked about the fact that you want to get rid of the Department of Education. You've said that you want to get rid of federal student loans. So how would you make college more accessible, more affordable for these students and students around the country? Well, I think you proved that the uh, policy of student loans is a total failure. I mean, a trillion dollars of debt, and it's going to be dumped on the taxpayer. And what have they gotten? A poorer education, and costs that have skyrocketed because of inflation, and they don't have jobs. There's nothing more dramatically failing than, than that program. So, no, there is no authority in the Constitution for the federal government to be dealing with education. We should get rid of the pro loan programs. We should get rid of the Department of Education and give tax credits if you have to to help people. But the inflation is the big problem. Three times the rate that the government admits inflation is, and that is natural and normal. When governments inflate the currency, it goes in the areas that the government gets involved in. Housing, high prices, Scott. Stock market, skyrocketing prices. Medical care, skyrocketing. Educa Wait, education. How do they pay for it? How do they now pay for college the, if the they're way, not? The way you they, pay for cell phones and computers. You have the marketplace there. There's competition. Quality goes up, the price goes down. Can you imagine what it would have been like if the De Department of Homeland Security was in charge of finding one person or one company to make the cell phones? I mean, it would have been a total disaster. So when the government gets involved in the delivery of any service, whether it's education, medical care, or housing, they cause higher prices, lower quality, create bubbles, and they give us this mess that we're in. That's why we have to eventually get our, our we have to wise up and look at where the bubbles come from. It's from the Federal Reserve, and we should start by auditing the Fed, and then we should end the Fed. Thank you, Congressman. Speaker Gingrich. Paul, uh, Governor Perry was just talking about the culture of Washington. His critics in the state of Texas, your congressman from Texas, say crony capitalism is what he's practiced as governor. Are they right? I haven't analyzed it well enough to call him a crony or not, so no. I, 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 I don't uh, know the details of that, but there is a lot of crony capitalism going on in this country, and that has to be distinguished from real capitalism because that's this occupation uh, stuff on Wall Street. If you're, if you're going after crony capitalism, I'm all for it. And those are the people who benefit from contracts from government, benefits from the Federal Reserve, benefits from all the bailouts. They don't deserve compassion. They deserve taxation or they, don't, they deserve to have all their benefits removed. But 
Crony capitalism isn't when somebody makes money and they produce a product. That is very important. We have to distinguish the two. And unfortunately, I think some people mix that. But uh, th this, to me, is so vital that we recognize what, crony, what capitalism is versus crony capitalism. And believe me, when you have an inflationary environment and all this speculation and all the bailouts due to the monetary system, believe me, you get a majority of the crony capitalism, and that's why we're facing this crisis today. We want to thank all of you tonight.